Hey everybody. Uh, so first off, apologies for being so long. Uh, that'll probably happen again. My day job is highly busy. Anywho, um, the last video was still like totally legit. I have cleaned things up a lot. Um, but on this one, I'm really just going to jump right into it and just show literally building a mission. We're going to harken back to um, the first mission in Rise of Flight, at least the first one that I remember playing specifically, uh, which was a delivery of schnapps. So um, in this case, we're going to be Russian, so we're going to deliver vodka. But there, there's a there's a shops delivery set to be uh, to, to be made shortly for sure. Um, anywho, so basically the system it's going to be called a sprue. Um, it'll have all these little components inside it. Here are all the things. Uh, signaler and temp are a little bit external, but whatever. I have some different groups. Um, I'd kind of gone through these things a little bit before, and they're a little bit different now for sure, um, but it is still basically the same thing. These things can kind of act independently. You can modify them a little bit, and uh, you can compose them so that they can affect each other in all kinds of different ways. Um, so for now, let's just kind of like put this together. Uh, you can approach it kind of any way you like. You may want to think about putting out like what the player aircraft is going to do. This is going to be a single player mission. Uh, you'll put your name on it. Uh, and so I have a unit in here that's for players. And so we'll make the R, which is Russian, player, and V5. The names might change a little bit on this. I'm building this before I release it. Um, and so basically what will come out with almost anything that you drag in will be a group here, which will be named in a similar way, um, Russian player. And then a set of stuff up here, which if we zoom in, we'll see is the configuration for how this thing operates. The how the player stuff operates is very simple, and we'll talk about that probably not on this video. Uh, but inside on the player, there's basically um, sets of waypoints. This can be made more complicated. This is kind of just the default. This represents one possible flight route. Um, it's a high elevation one by chance. This one represents another. This one represents another, and this one represents another. Only one would be active per flight, and they'd be random on each start. Here are the actual units. You have a multiplayer base, which probably has almost certainly all the airplanes loaded inside it right now. So it'd be a little, yep, <laughs> it'd be a bit absurd for real, but this is like the default. And then you have some uh, almost certainly P-38s um, right here with the secondary one set to player. So this way you basically have a useful player um, set up that you can do something kind of with. And so what we want these guys to be doing is delivering, so schnapps. So maybe we would want more than um, one, two, three, four stage waypoints. Um, but like, honestly, this will work for this. And this is kind of an example. And I'm not going to show extending a module right now. We might show that on another one. So then all you have to really do is think about where you want them to take off and land. Um, so these guys are designed in such a way that they have a, oh, I might have kind of uh, buried the land command. Yeah, there we go. So these guys will take off, go to this waypoint, go down, run down one of these four waypoints, fly back, go to this waypoint, and then land. And you can have them take off or start in the air. They start in the air by default. And so we can just kind of set these guys out just a little bit. One of the ways in building, and this is an aside, is that you can pull in all the different units that you want at once, and you can do some performance testing. In this case, I know I'm not going to use too many units, so I don't have to like think about uh, pushing the limits. So anyway, I just kind of decide where we're going to take off from. This obviously can change as we build the mission. We'll assume we're going to take off right here near Moscow. And then um, I'm going to have us fly to say, let's go all the way up to Kelm. We won't go too far, um, but there will be a good landing spot there. Cool. And then I'm going to double check and make sure, and this is kind of a little bit beyond what we're going to be doing right now. Um, but I'm going to double check and see that it's configured to just fly one direction and not fly back. And seriously, don't even like worry about what this is about. Cool. Yeah, so it's set to fly back, which I probably want to stop, but is a little bit annoying. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remember that right now and fix it later. Um, anyway, so all that really means is that these guys are going to fly out and then fly back. And I just want them to fly one direction. 
so that they can go from here to here. And I'll have to do a little configuration to switch that. That will be easy, I promise. Um, I'm just building out that module right now. So um, we'll move on to the next thing that we want to have happen. And that is I'm gonna have some basically transport flights that are kind of flying alongside. So I'm gonna pull in uh, our transport. These are flights. Um, these will fly one directionally and correctly um, just to demonstrate that it is possible. Um, and that it really is just my suckiness on uh, the case of that one that we were just looking at. Anyway, these guys are kind of interesting in that by default they're like three transport aircraft. Um, you can kind of set them however you want, covered by two fighters. And they will flight their route with their coverage and then the two will land and they can take off and land from different places. And so I'm actually not going to set these guys out yet. Uh, because essentially we're just going to put them uh, flying a very similar path to us. So they'll go from like here-ish to, and if we're landing at Kiln right here, maybe we'll have them land over here. We might even have one land way up here or go all the way up to Kellen. Um, but we can decide that later. We're just kind of pulling the units in right now, and we'll set that up in a second. And then we're going to want another one of those, um, but we'll deal with that in a moment, and I'll show you why. We'll deal with that in a moment. And then um, we're going to want some opponents. And right now I'm kind of thinking about like the big units that I really want to be interacting and be thinking about each other. And these big units, the ones that we're pulling in, are those kind of things. So like this transport unit kind of like keeps track of whether or not it succeeds or fails. It runs through all of its uh, different permutations, um, and um, it's kind of designed to be interacted with. But then there's also some units that I have that are just kind of like flavor that they're there for like, hey, there's some trains here, some vehicles there. And so we'll get to those in just a second. But I like to put in kind of the main thrust of what the mission is doing first. And so then I'm going to imagine that there's some uh, German air attack that's going to be coming in against us. And maybe it's not too heavy. Like really this is just, and it, this was the initial mission in Rise of Flight. So this is already becoming more difficult. If I remember correctly, that mission just had a uh, single like maybe a flight of small bombers that you could go after two seaters maybe since we have a lot of the rise of flight and i think i bet we have all the relevant ones um maybe i could remake that mission totally but part of what's cool about this is that this means when you replay it you're going to get different configurations you get different aircraft flying different routes and you can change how that is like right now it's kind of default and each route is like a slightly different elevation i think it's a pretty narrow band it's maybe like 700 meters to i think maybe 3800 meters or something like that um it's it's oftentimes it's a lot more pleasant to kind of have like a um a narrower band in a certain zone so like you know you'd have like these fighters are coming in and they're coming in high uh somewhere between four and six six k um but like the setup that i'm doing right now is really just pulling in these guys on their generic settings and so each one of these I pull in, what I've gra grabbed right here are the configuration. That this is the stuff for like um, how it operates. It has all the wires and gook in it. And I'm just going to group all these over on the right so that I can wire them up to each other. This is what allows you to do things. Like you can actually like compose these things. Like when this one lands, that one takes off. We're not going to do anything that complicated in this mission. But you can also have them, <laughs> excuse me, sequence to each other. Like both of them have to reach a certain point and then do something, um, which is really handy. Uh, especially for like really telling the story. So anyway, I'm going to assume that there's two fighters coming in. Um, <laughs> and normally I would just do, as I was kind of suggesting with the transport a moment ago, I'd really just drag in one of any single type. And then I would just, after I configured it, I would copy it because I'd often want the second one to do something similar. And that's what I'm going to do with the transport. We'll show it here in just one second. Um, but I want these two flights to actually do like wildly different things. Um, so I pulled them in separately. And I think that's it, basically, for, like, big units um, of units that are really, like, effectual. Uh, I am going to pull in a Russian front line, which is basically going to be just a front line marker for the map and um, a pretty hefty set of artillery that you can put out and about. Um, it's not configured in any, like, super smart way, but it is aggressive and defensive. Um, it's kind of just, like, set up as, like, something that's, like, handy is probably the right way to put it. Uh... And I uh, will set this up later. I just want it in the thing. And then I'm going to do some flavor. And so at this stage, I've kind of got all my control units. Not totally, but enough that I can group it. And we're going to make this tree over here on the right be a lot happier. And 
In fact, I even left some out I shouldn't have. Oh, no, 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 I'm good. I said I did this. Cool, so this is like our control stuff. I'm gonna rename it now, but we're gonna have to like open it up and that name will go away, but whatever. Um, so we have two German airs, one Russian transport. We have our Russian player planes. Um, and now we're gonna add in some flavor. And so I like to put it here and I just make, I'm gonna end up making a new group. So each of these are marked with FL. So like I'm gonna have in a number of Russian rails. So these are just gonna be like very basic trains that are just gonna keep running. Um, Uh, and like they really have very little randomness, but they're very simple and very small and not complicated. And so I'm actually going to put all these guys. I'm definitely going to use at least two trains. And then you can leave these up at the top level of the tree, just like all the major units, but I like to put them in a group. Because it's conceivable why you would even use the same flavor for like a set of different missions. Um, I haven't done that yet because I haven't built enough missions with this system because it's kind of brand new. Uh, cool. So now I'm going to actually go into the flavor. There's totally jokes I could make right there, I'm sure. Um, I'm also going to put in some vehicles. So obviously I have to place these. Um, I'll have to put the rails on trains. I'll have to put the vehicles on road. And they, and they are set to be on road by default for the vehicles like this. Um, I'm actually going to give them a Russian ship as well. Um, which I'll put either in one of these rivers, probably, yeah, probably one of these rivers. And these guys by default use a user formation. Cool. And I don't think I'm going to use any of the German flavor stuff. Um, like the idea is that they're kind of coming in from a deep flight. I might have put like artillery over here for them or something or conceivably some vehicles. But like we'll do that later if we want to and we have extra performance. I'd rather be actually be able to put in more air units. And I just haven't thought about that enough yet. Cool. So then the next thing to do here is actually pretty straightforward. It's now starting to place the units. And I'm actually going to start with the transport first. And we're just going to be super specific about it. I'm going to have their covering flight, which is right here, and this is all I need for it, take off from this airfield. And the actual flight take off from this one, and I am going to have them take off. So by default, they are in air, but I'm going to put them on runway. And I'm going to set them down. And this is going to take a second because I probably didn't do this in the best way. I didn't. I had meant to kind of like clean up these like tiny little details like this uh, before doing this video. But like I said, this is not, this is a little bit before release. And so I will have it set up where you don't have to do this kind of like doctoring fussiness here we'll make sure they're on the ground so these guys can even be closer together than they are um, because they only one column of them going this oblique way would be active at a time so they like aren't going to run into each other they're going to take off and they're going to go to this waypoint after taking off as soon as they go to that waypoint they're going to go down one of these four roads and it's going to go all the way down this road and then they're going to go somewhere and land so why don't we just go ahead and put the landing there and we'll have the target and let's have these guys land. Um, these top ones are the actual transport units that really matter. And we'll have them land here. And then we'll have their covering flights land just north of them, right up there. That'll be pretty cool. We'll set, we'll set all that detail in a moment. And so we can kind of go ahead and start to pace this out, thinking that where they're going to result, they'll be at one of these four we're probably cool with most of these. We'll kind of put it over here, maybe a little bit. This will put it more in risk. It'll be a higher elevation on the outside, lower elevation on the inside. And we could conceivably flip that, but I don't think I want to. So let's just grab another set of these and we'll kind of split them out so they do some different stuff. You can do this like really however you want. Like I'm obviously being pretty arbitrary. Cool. 
Cool, and this right side will be very high elevation, actually, so it'll be definitely like the safest flight. And we could change that, and we might. Um, so now I'm gonna place these guys carefully. Those guys were placed already. I didn't do the cover flight yet. Will the cover flight join over there? These guys will have exactly the same rotation problem because I'm dumb. Set them on the ground. And these guys, they don't have to be quite as close to each other because of this airfield, but whatever. And I just have two airplanes for the covering flight, as you can see here. Boom. Cool, and then we'll set their landing. So this is kind of like where they're gonna land up. It's kind of where they're gonna queue up to land, I should say. This is a marker that just says what this flight is, really. So like this says that this is a transport flight and we could rename it something. In fact, that's like for cool, awesome missions, those things would often be named like for the wing. Uh, cool. And then similar, well, we'll go ahead and let them land this way for speed. And this is the cover landing. And, and you don't have to totally make this landing stuff happen. I just kind of have it by default and I think takeoff and landing is cool. If you don't think it's cool, whatever. JK, of course. Okay, so now what we want to do is um, actually take that configured transport unit. So we didn't like set the types of airplanes or anything yet. We're just going to use the defaults for now. And we're going to go to the control. And we're going to find the transport um, controller, which I, of course, didn't like really say very carefully. We're going to grab it. We're going to add the transport to selection. We're going to copy. And we're going to paste that whole thing. So now we have a whole nother set of these guys doing it and we can just move them around a little bit. We're just gonna take off, change a little bit where they're taking off and change a little bit where their flight pattern is. And now we have two that fly next to each other and they're pretty randomized. Um, you have one of four different actual flights of aircraft and you have one of four different routes which they take. So um, that can be, <laughs> excuse me, sequenced or random. It is of course random by default. Um, here, I'm gonna rename this guy to just be a little bit unconfused in the future. And so I'm initially literally just going to line this guy up one for one. And then we'll move them. So like this is just the units right on top of one another. But I'm going to go ahead and what I'm actually going to do is leave that one in place and move the original just because it's a little easier to get to. That's more like how to interact with this mission editor and I'm just kind of going to leave that alone for right now. So I'm gonna switch where they're taking off from. So this is where now the old ones are taking off from, so I can pretty reliably move to ones where I know no one else is taking off from. It will just go super close, because it'll be it'll look cool. <laughs> That's the reason. These guys are highly convenient where they are right now. Not mean to do that. Cool, so you see I don't have to reconfigure half this crap, which is very nice. But these guys are still gonna do things that are insanely similar. So let's shift them off a bit. And now we can just literally like go like that. And now they're gonna do stuff that's crazy close to each other, but unique and interesting. And I could have them land at the same places, um, especially if I went like this. Sorry, I just didn't want to rotate that top thing. Right? Cool. And then we can let the other one land there too, and it'll literally just be, because it's only two aircraft, that'll be just queuing up to four, and so it'll still land pretty quick. And also, uh, these guys are just timed to kind of like, hey, go for a landing, and after a certain amount of time, they get deactivated, and the next flight goes out. You can, of course, change that. Uh, I can't remember. It's a pretty large amount of time, but not huge, like maybe seven minutes or something like that. Cool. So that guy's configured and out. Um, all of these guys just kind of run by default, by the way. So like if we went to this little control zone where I'm going to start putting these guys all together. Um, and we're going to queue these together and we're going to connect a point system to it. But they all just kind of start and run by themselves. 
I guess we'll get it enough to kind of organize it. This is the um, artillery for the front line. This is the player. Um, that's the German air. So we'll line these up here. Cool, these are the two German air units. So like these two are the controllers for these two. I don't remember which is which, but I don't care right now either. Um, this is the transport controller. This is the other transport controller. And so just looking at one of these quickly to show what it's kind of doing is inputs are kind of on the left, although there's a sequence system right here and then outputs are on the right. It's pretty common that that's how these things run. That turns things this on, that turns it off. Um, this sets it to be axis style, this sets it to be allies. This starts it. Um, this is um, a kind of a joke name, but it's for if, if you've been observed. So in other words, the icons that this displays are only seen by the friendly side. And if this gets hit, then both sides can see the icons. Um, it's part of, there's a layer to this that I'll talk about later about reconnaissance. Um, this is for selecting the units um, within it uh, in certain ways or patterns. This is for setting the formation. And um, this is for determining whether the routes that are chosen are random or sequenced. They're random by default. Um, this just turns the things on, sets it to allies, and this starts it. As it runs, it runs through some phases. It says, hey, the units are ready to do something. Then it does its egress. Then it finishes its egress. Uh, and so you can kind of like jump in the middle. These are like hooks. Um, then it does its action. Um, then it finishes its action, and then it finishes. And at the end, it'll say success or failure. It actually does that as it's finishing. Um, it'll say when it's done, in other words, like the units are out of the game, and it'll say when it's totally out of units, like it's expended, like literally you can't get anything else out of this baby. Uh, each thing has basically four reserves. I don't use spawning because it sucks. That's my story. I do spawn the trains because that doesn't suck. Um, anyway, uh, so now the next thing to do is really just to configure the rest of the units and place them. Um, but this is probably a pretty good example. This will actually make these transport flights fly. Um, and do their thing. And um, I'm just going to cut this here, just kind of break these things into parts, and the next video will show the next parts.